do a bit of uh, commentary on a Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because a friend of mine called me out for being a giant massive pussy, and rightly so, for playing Metal Gear and using this shit, which I should have really turned off from the very beginning. So there goes reflex mode. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to dedicate this video to him. But at the same time, I'm also going to try and give a little bit of a mini review of what I think of this game in particular uh, so far, because I've only done like 36, 37% completion so far, so I still got a long way to go. I still haven't touched much of the multiplayer yet. So yeah, it's a, it's a massive game, so it'll take a while. Um, yeah, so yeah, excuse me for playing this completely uh, like a noob, so to speak, due to the fact that I've just switched off reflex mode for the first time, so I don't know how the hell I'm going to fare against these these guys. Um, worthwhile noting, I will not be doing any main missions, so don't worry about spoilers and shit like that. Uh, I'll be mentioning a little bit about the story in this mini review, uh, but nothing too spoilerish again, so don't worry about spoilers, essentially. Um, okay, so what do I think of Metal Gear 5? Uh, hmm. To be honest, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I'm having a blast just screwing around, playing around with Snake here. Um, playing around with D-Dog, giving him a little pat on the back. Hi, D-Dog. Good, good. Uh, oh shit, and I'm already fucked. Uh, I thought I switched off the place, what the fuck? Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Off. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go, now it's off. Now it's time to play like big boss. Right um, a little bit of history, I've played pretty much every single Metal Gear game out there except for the ones on the PSP which were the Metal Gear Acid and Metal Gear Acid 2, I believe they were called. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm mistaken, which I probably am. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I never had a PSP, so I wasn't able to play those two in particular, but um, from what I gather, I haven't missed much in terms of uh, well, gameplay or uh, storyline or whatever, based on those ones. Um, I particularly enjoy the Metal Gear series uh, a lot, and uh, this one, King Open World and all that, huge departure from that lovely, um, how do you say, uh, tightly put together game with you know everything according to Kojima, full of detail. You know, smaller worlds but packed full of detail. This is a rather large map, as you can see. This is a, one of the places you go to. This is in Afghanistan, and then you're in Central Africa, um, and they're they're quite huge. And I do like the freedom of running around from camp to camp, from fort to fort, and either capturing outposts and all that stuff. And, and yeah, it's it's thoroughly enjoyable. Enjoyable. Um, there's tons of weapons, a lot of tools to play with. Uh, uh, one thing I'm finding a little bit disappointing is how the AI is a little bit moronic. Still, <laughs> it always has been moronic in Metal Gear games. Let's be real. However, they do do nice things here and there with with the AI, the way they react, the way they talk, the way they when they try to hunt you down. But ultimately, they're a bunch of morons. Oh shit! Fuck. Oh, got a different time. Ooh. Turns out I can be big boss, that's not too bad at all. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far in terms of missions wise, and uh, my story seems okay so far. I've, uh, what else do I have to say? Graphics are unbelievably lovely. Uh, this Fox engine is amazing, I have to say. I, I really like all the stuff that you know, Kojima's been putting out so far on the PS4. Real shame about PT being cancelled, because that was something I was kind of looking forward to. Uh, some disappointments, some, you know, because it's not all peaches and roses in my book as a Metal Gear fanboy that I am. One thing I'm really despising is Keith Sunderland, or Sutherland or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, Hollywood actor, blah blah blah, got on board to take on the role of Snake here and I'm um, I personally think he's got a very, very poor job done so far. I mean, uh, 
Uh, when he's having codec moments with Ocelot, uh, I, I find Ocelot's voice actor miles better and much more engaging and more interesting as a character, so to speak. Whereas Snake is kind of feels like a very silent protagonist. Oh, fuck, I'm getting screwed here. Oh, shit. Here we go. Fuck, fuck. Okay, let's go. Let's go. One minute to risk it. Yeah, um, Keeper doesn't do a real good job of portraying Snake. Um, I've always found Snake quite a fascinating game, game character. And uh, always interesting to see his perspective on things in life. And, uh, you know, as from previous games where you know he always gives his two cents about matters worldwide issues or weapons or just all around all around things that you know humans tend to do uh, I don't know I think of some examples at the top of my head and it's a little difficult right now because I'm getting fucked by these guys. Um, let me think. Uh, even things about like just him smoking and you know, and then Codex Carl's complaining that they will kill him and him just not giving a fuck essentially. Uh, you, know, you, don't, you don't get much of that banter, so to speak, with the keeper, and, it, and it's a shame. And you know, even his his voice acting sounds drained. It's like, I feel like I'm playing a silent protagonist game, and I I don't kind of like those type of games to be honest. I always like to have a nice little story written out and in you know, a nice package, rather than pretending to be a, a hero or shit. Okay, there goes my no kill. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get fucked. Get out, get out. I'm always not doing that. Okay, this uh, reflex mode uh, is gonna suck ass now that I've turned it off, I'm not gonna lie. But my friend was right, you've gotta play this game without none of that bullshit. And it feels more intense, I suppose. Uh, yeah, there's a. Um, yeah. A lot of weapons, a lot of nice, uh, interesting uh, mechanics you can use, especially with the buddy system, which I've completely uh, neglected in this little playing session I'm doing right now. So let's see if I can do anything while I'm under attack. I just gave him a command to attack and meet someone. I don't know if it works that well. And it can be fucked around like this. Oh, shit, I'm dead. Yeah, it's an, in an intense game, and it's, uh, you know, the. The many approaches of doing missions as well is another reason I like this uh, Metal Gear 5 a lot. Is like there's there's plenty of ways to do things, uh, approaching missions in various ways. You know, until until you know exactly what you're doing on a mission, you know, it can be quite difficult. And uh, once you've done the mission once or twice, and then you're going to go for your S racks or whatever you want to go for, it becomes a lot easier when you know where you're going and what you're doing. But until I get to that point where I know what I'm doing in each of the missions, it, it feels fun and interesting, you know, interrogating soldiers, finding new targets. Uh, and yeah, and the, and the meta game, which is Mother Base, which I, I consider a massive character in the game itself. Uh, uh, Mother Base stuff, I love him, I have to say. It's, uh, I, I love them from Peace Walker on the... Uh, in the HD collection which I played, where, where you're developing Mother Base and it's part of Big Boss's story, if you follow the previous stories and everything. It's it's wonderful addition and uh, and it's much welcomed, um, it's much welcomed and you know, more expanded than the Peace Walker edition of it. And, uh, and I really like that, I really like traversing around Mother Base and you know, raising them staff morale by just seeing some of the staff members on the struts of Mother Base. And, it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting, and it's got like little mini things you can do in Mother Base and characters to find as well, and um, diamonds to hunt. So yeah, it's, uh, it's always interesting to see that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, uh, what else did I want to say about the game? Um, sound and music, oh my god, I love the 80s pop, cheesy, corny pop music, it's fantastic. I'm still looking for more cassette tapes to add to my uh, collection. Uh, really, really like the music. I was really happy to find uh, the soundtrack from Metal Gear 3 as well. You know, uh, in one of the outposts, when you collect the cassette tapes, you can add them to your or to your music library, so to speak. So you can just sit back and listen to them. Uh, I'm not going to play any of them now due to you know YouTube and its bullshit copyright uh, um, clamping down or whatever fuck they do. Anyways, I don't want to screw around with those guys. Uh, hold on a sec. What do we got here? Anyways, this is a side off. Uh, a side off for those who are wondering what I'm doing in this area now. So there's plenty of plenty of side offs. Um, I can see a lot of people moaning that it's 
probably quite repetitive and you know, there's a lot of um, repetition in terms of the amount uh, in, in the various side ops that you can undertake. These are entirely optional. Um, I'm finding a l myself enjoying them a lot, doing, doing as many of them as I can before I proceed with the main missions and I'm, I really enjoy doing these. Uh, so they can range from anything like uh, rescue a, and extract a prisoner or uh, eliminate a tank unit or uh, uh, Fulton out uh, Fultoning out uh, containers with resources for Mother Base and all that kind of stuff. So there's a little bit of variety. It's not the greatest of variety. Um, you know, once you've done one of each, you pretty much know what you're doing. But due to the fact that it's a, a humongous open world game uh, and the various uh, environments that you traverse are quite varied um, in terms of uh, like the bases, the way they're laid out and all that kind of stuff. Not so much in terms of graphics, because you get basically two main environments. You see like these dusty desert uh, Af Afghani... Oh shit, uh, my suppressor's down. Yeah, this, this Afghani uh, landscape is quite barren and rocky, as you can see around in the background. Uh, you get all that throughout the whole continent of Afghanistan, the continent, the whole country of Afghanistan, as you can see here. And in the Africa region, it's, all, it's more jungle-like. So those are the two main sort of environments you'll get. Uh, not too many indoor environments like the previous Metal Gears. Can I get this guy from here? Shit. Okay, he's got a shield on his back. Okay, so let's see what we can try to do. Let's use the dog. Wound the motherfucker. Come on, doggy. Go! Get him. That's it. Good dog. Good dog. Oh, did that hurt? Did that hurt? Alright, get out the way, dog. Alright, he's up Get out the way, dog. Okay, that's the prisoner we have to extract for this side of. Let me scan him. You can see he's a specialist in uh, sniper rifles, got an A in research and development, and he'll be a great addition to our mother base. So, hello. Oh shit, there's another guard there. Okay, he's gonna have to die. Oh. Oh. <laughs> if there's anyone else worthwhile taking back before the reinforcements arrive. Yeah, so there's got a lot of um, collecting soldiers for your mother base. Uh, these, you know, these are entirely optional as far as I'm aware. Um, uh, I like doing these things. I like I like building up the mother base to its full extent. Uh, if you get good uh, rated soldiers for, in the various departments of mother base, you can start uh, developing more weapons and uh, more interesting items to use, and uh, there's, a, there's always a, there's a ton of stuff. Uh, let me just get out of this mission area and um, just get my silencer back. There is something. There it is. Just oh, fuck off. Come on, get the pistol. There we go. Uh, yeah, so you you, you, know, you can develop and ton of weapons and items to use from other base and it depends on the quality of your staff that you recruit for back that you recruit back to mother base. So yeah it's got all that meta game stuff going on in the background as well with mother base so which I particularly like. I know a lot of people don't quite like that they think it's too tedious and takes away from the action. Which I can understand but um, at the same time I, I do feel it's part of the big boss's main story. And it's, uh, it's very interesting to see what happens to him before you, or for those who've played it, the previous games and understand the plight of the big boss. Um, yeah, as I've said, I've only, I'm only done 46% of this game, so, or 36 actually, sorry. And yeah, there seems to be plenty of stuff to do still. There's a lot of missions I haven't done yet. I'm looking forward to doing the main missions. And. That kind of concludes my mini review. Um, one thing I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier that I haven't really touched yet on the on the invading of other people's bases. I've been invaded once, and I turned out to be uh, it was a disaster because I was a little bit drunk when I was playing it at that time. And it was the only time I've actually been invaded uh, and people trying to nick resources from your mother base, which uh, apparently is quite annoying. But it's only happened to me once, so um, I don't know yet. So I don't know how that works yet, or how often you can do it, and uh, I don't even know if I can do it yet, or maybe later on in the game or something. Fuck off. I should play the game. And, yeah, so, um, I'm, I'm hoping that when I'm finished with it, I'll double 
fully into the multiplayer as well and see what that's all about and give a bit more of a comprehensive review and um, more thoughts, I suppose. And, oh, I feel like shit. Stop waking up every day. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh, I'll show you guys some of the stuff that you can develop. Uh, let's get out of this place. So yeah, this time around you're not only soloing like in the world of Metal Gear where Snake is notorious for going on and doing these business on his own, infiltrating the most heavily guarded outposts and uh, barracks and whatnot. This time around you bring your buddies along with you. In this case I've got my D-Dog. Hello D-Dog. Good. Where is he? Okay, Good. okay. Oh. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He always does that, he never gets him right. Uh, yeah, you can bring a buddy along for pretty much all the missions now. Um, we've got four, I believe, in total. I think I've got all four of them. Um, I don't know if there's any others. I hope there are, because um, they, they did kind of spoil all the buddies you get prior to the game getting released. So you get um, you get Edon, you get uh, a horse, which I love a lot. The horse is probably my favorite one. You get Quiet, who everyone keeps moaning about, because she's not wearing enough clothes. You know, they've got nothing better else to moan about in life. Uh, Quiet is an interesting character. Um, I didn't like her at first as a buddy because she was always freaking annoying and tampering with my infiltration mission. Uh, it was quite annoying a lot of the time. Uh, but eventually, when you when you increase your bond with your buddy that you bring onto the field, you can start um, upgrading them. Uh, not upgrading them. You can start developing items for them and different weapons and stuff. And uh, yeah, now that I've upgraded Quiet significantly, she's got she's become really overpowered in my opinion so every time I take her on the field with me I just kick ass like the right and center and I, now that I've turned off reflex mode I think I'll be doing more of that uh, okay so now that we've a bit far away so you've got all this stuff you can do here you can also um, send your troops out on side ops uh, when you send them on side ops it's always, it's always interesting because you can get um, you get extra stuff, and blueprints in this situation here that help you develop new weapons and new items. Uh, these are like all meta games again. De depending on the recruits that you bring on board to Mother Base, and it will depend on the success of the missions. And um, yeah, they do their thing on their own side while you're doing your main thing. And uh, basically, they'll bring be br they will be bringing you back resources, money to spend on Mother Base, and development and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, keep sending your troops around. It's always worthwhile. And when you go to Mother Base, you can do staff management, check out what kind of uh, what kind of troops you go around and develop stuff. Let's have a look what we got here. There's a huge variety of weapons, like uh, as you can see here, these are just the handguns. Like I haven't seen that one yet. It's a hand cannon. Well, designed to fire grenades. Hmm, hmm, that sounds fun. Why not? Why the fuck not? And now I've sent the team to develop that for me. And you've got a variety of weapons. You see the ones here in green. Once you've developed these weapons, they can be used by your staff on Mother Base. So when they're getting invaded by other online players, they're a little bit more better equipped to deal with the situation. We've got our shotguns here. And, and because it's my first playthrough, I always try to play it like Big Boss would, so I try not to kill people. It's really hard not to do that in this game. But uh, yeah, when I do my second playthrough, I imagine I'll be kicking the shit out of everyone and using whatever tools I've got. Uh, you've got capture cages, boxes return, thankfully. I always like to see boxes in Metal Gear. Stealth camo's back as well. Uh, I'm hoping to see the bandana. I don't know if that's in yet, or my team's not... Uh, my research and development team's not good enough to do it yet. And you've got yourself your your uh, camouflages again, which you can't change anymore on the fly. You're gonna have to call in supplies from Mother Base before you can equip uh, new outfits. Cost a lot of money to do that stuff. So yeah, I kind of like it like that. It's a bit better than Metal Gear 3 when you when you're changing on the fly and you're constantly changing and constantly trying to repair your well, to heal yourself. Uh, I found that a bit tedious in Metal Gear 3. So. It's good to have the camouflage back, like old school style, but at least this time around you've got to think uh, what kind of camouflage, what kind of suit you're going to wear before you go out on a mission in particular. 
So now, okay, we've completed that mission. Let's see what we got now. Should we got a gunship? There's a gun. Oh, the motherfucker's up there. Take it down. Hello. Okay. Well, okay, that um, concludes my uh, mini review of Metal Gear 5. I'm halfway through, enjoying it thoroughly. If you're a fan of Metal Gear series, I highly recommend you grab this. Uh, and if Kojima is hearing this by any chance, which I seriously doubt, please bring back David Hayter for the next one. It's just a waste of time with Keith or Sutherland. I don't, I don't think he's suited for it, and uh, it just takes away a lot of the character of Big Boss and Snake and how much of a cool character he used to be. Uh, apart from that little, nit, nit, tiny little bits, um, I'm having a lot of fun with this, and uh, thank you for watching. Ciao.